Welcome to the Reef Patrol channel. My name is Vanessa Karakia, and this is a quick tip for those of you that are already editing the footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. And this quick tip is called creating proxies. And this is not only an underwater filming tip, this uh, actually addresses everybody that is editing footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm bringing this tip to the underwater filmmaking series because many of you are traveling and filming with notebooks on location or on site. Maybe you're filming a trip report and you want to start editing that footage already on location or you film during the day and you just feel that itch and you're so excited and just want to start editing that footage straight away on the computer on location. Well then this this tip is going to make your life so much easier and save you so much time. So make sure to be subscribed to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified when we upload further episodes. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. But first, t-shirt. Oh well, good enough. In this video, we're talking about Adobe Premiere Pro, but this feature exists in other editing software too. So you can still watch this video to get the idea and then search for other videos or tutorials that will explain how this works with your editing software. So let's get started and move over to the screen. So here we are in Adobe Bridge. This is essentially the image browser of Adobe. This is a project from our latest trip to Curacao and there is a lot of footage. So the way I like to organize the footage is not per day, like a lot of people do. For me, I like to organize it per subject, per camera, per lens, and if it's more than one filmer, per filmer as well. And this sorting system works for me. Maybe another sorting system works for you. Anyhow, let's get started with the reef day. Now I've made a copy of this folder in advance and added some shots, so that way it's a bit clearer for you. So the next step would be to import all the footage into Adobe Premiere, and I like to do that with drag and drop. That way Premiere already creates a folder with all the footage inside of it. You can toggle between the list view and the thumbnail view, depending on what you like more. And yes, if you've already noticed, the software is in German. The icons and the procedures are all the same, so just don't worry about it too much. So once you're in the thumbnail view, you can either scrub through the footage with the slider or just with the cursor to check out your footage. The way I like to create a new sequence is by dragging and dropping the whole footage onto the create new object icon. That way it's going to create a new timeline or a new sequence with all the attributes of the footage. In this case, it's going to be 50 frames per second, it's going to be 4K and all the audio settings will be matching the footage. So once you've added the footage to the timeline, you can see that going through the footage is a drag. It's 4K, 50 frames a second, and the computer is having difficulties to play back the footage in real time. Now, how do you know this is not real time? So what you can do is you can click on the little tool icon and then you can select drop frame indicator. So once you select it, it's gonna show up on the left side and that's gonna show you how many frames are being dropped out. So once you're playing back the footage, you can see it turns into the yellow or orange little dot and it starts dropping frames and the footage is not played back in real time. And it gets even worse when you start with color correction and adding effects and everything. What you can do is you can drop the resolution and then it will maybe play back a bit faster. So how can you avoid all of this stress and bashing the keyboard? Well, the simple answer is create proxies. Proxies are essentially a low resolution version of your high resolution footage and they will allow you to work so much faster during your editing process, especially if you're working on a notebook and you don't have a powerful workstation. Now, there is a downside to this, and this was one that prevented me from using proxies for a long time. But once I started using them, I will never, ever, 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 ever not use them anymore. 
And let me promise you, once you've added creating proxies to your workflow, this becomes just a little part of the whole project. So the downside is it takes a bit of time. So what I would usually do is I would start creating the proxies overnight or when I'm not at home so that when I get back to the computer, all the proxies are generated. But we're going to get into this in a second. So let's create some proxies. So the way I like to do it is do a right click on the footage folder, go to create proxy. And there you've got a few options to choose from the different resolutions, different formats and the location where the proxies should be saved to. Now, I like to have the proxies in the same folder as the footage. So once you've chosen your settings, you hit OK and then Adobe Media Encoder opens automatically imports all the footage of your folder and starts rendering low resolution versions of your footage. And as you can see, a folder called proxies is created in your original footage folder. In that proxy folder, all the proxies are going to be saved automatically. The footage is going to be named the same as your original footage with an underscore proxy. And the most important part here is after you've generated proxies, do not rename the footage. If you do that, you're going to mess up the connection between the high resolution and the low resolution files. I'm speeding up the rendering process just so that we don't have to wait for all of the files to render. So here we are, all the footage is rendered, all the proxies are generated, the folder is there, and now we can go back to Adobe Premiere. If you drop down the folder, you can see all the footage. We rendered low resolution, but it's still not playing back smoothly. For this, you have to activate the proxies first and you have to tell Adobe, please use the proxies. So you're going to have to link the high resolution to the low resolution file. But don't worry, you're not going to have to do it by yourself. Adobe is going to take care of that. Go back to your project window and then you right click on this bar. Then it's going to show you the options for your metadata. Here you simply type in proxy and check all of the boxes. Hit OK. That way you're going to add a column. And this is a bit annoying. It's going to add them right at the end. So you're going to have to scroll all the way to the right to find them. And then you can just drag and drop them to wherever you want to place them. For me, I like to add the proxy column to see if the proxy is linked or not, and also the proxy location. So now we created the proxies and we can see that the proxies are linked to the high resolution file, but it still doesn't play back smoothly. So there's another thing you have to do. And don't worry, you don't have to do this every time. Once you've set this up in Premiere, it's going to be there for the rest of the projects. What you need to do now is to add the proxy icon. So you go to your program window and at the bottom right, there's a little plus sign. Click on that and then you're going to have different icons you can choose from. You can check the Adobe website what all these icons mean, but this is the icon that you're looking for. This is the toggle proxy on and off switch. And then you just drag and drop it to the place where you want to have it. So once you've added the button, you have to press it and that's going to activate the proxy. So when you toggle between on and off, you can clearly see the difference in the sharpness of the fish because you're going to be switching between the high and the low resolution file. And now, as you can see, the drop frame indicator is green and it's playing back smoothly. And I have another little quick tip for you, and that is the workspace area bar. I like using the workspace area bar more than the in and the out points because the in and the out points create an overlay over your timeline and that disturbs me when I'm editing. And with the workspace area bar, it just shows you the in and the out point on the bar on top of the timeline. And also later on when you're rendering, you can choose the workspace area as a rendering option. But we're going to get to that in a second. If you don't have the workspace area bar on your timeline, this is how you add it. You can add the workspace area bar by right clicking on the three lines beside the sequence name and then you choose workspace area bar and then it will pop up in your sequence. And there's a second little quick tip. If you want to add only the video file from your footage, you can drag and drop that into the timeline. And the same goes with audio. To do that, you just double click on your footage and then your footage will open up in the source window and then you just drag and drop either the video icon 
or you just drag and drop the audio icon. If you want to have both, you just drag and drop the whole file from the project window or from the source window. And here you can see that the proxies are still connected and you can toggle between the high resolution and the low resolution file. Sometimes Premiere has issues with connecting the proxies. This will usually happen with a project when you're working with multiple hard drives and computers and you're going back and forth in between them. So for example, when you're on the trip and you started editing, you created your proxies, you come back home, you add everything to your hard drive locally, and then you open up the project and then somehow you feel the computer is slow, but Premiere is telling you all the proxies are linked. And then you start to wonder, how do I figure out if the proxies are really linked or not, even if it says they are linked. And for me, I found a little workaround how to do it. And it's very simple and it's obvious and it's clear and you can definitely see if it's a proxy or the original file and you don't have to go and check all the connections and check every footage you can just see it with a toggle on and off switch for example with this clip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for that proxy file in the proxy folder and i'm going to delete it just to show you the workaround i like to use and now we're back in Premiere and you can see that the proxy setting has turned to offline because the file is non-existent and we have to recreate the proxy for this file. So what I would do is, instead of using the same aspect ratio, I will choose a different one. It's going to start rendering automatically and here you can already see what's going to happen. So now the proxy has been generated, it's been attached to the original file. When you switch proxies on, you can see very clearly what's happening here. Black bars on the right and left of the image. So that way I can check instantly if the proxy is connected or not. If I see the bars on the right and left, I know the proxy is connected. And I don't have to zoom into the footage, I don't have to check the link, I don't have to check the connection. It's just easy and quick to see. Now the important question is, what file is Adobe going to render when you add this to the render queue? Is it going to render the low resolution with the bars on the right and the left? Or is it going to render the high resolution version? Let's try it out. I'm going to add my workspace area bar. And then I'm going to save the project, drag and drop the sequence into the Adobe Media Encoder. I'm just going to clear up the render queue and delete all the old proxy renderings. Here is a sequence we have added. And if we click onto the preset, it's going to open the export settings. And at the bottom, in the middle, you can choose workspace area bar. I'm just going to leave all the settings as they are. The output is going to be HD, not 4K. Choose the location where Adobe Media Encoder should save your rendering. Hit save and click on render. I'm going to speed this up again so you don't have to wait and drag and drop the final rendering into the project window. As you can see, it's HD, as I said, and then I'm going to drag the file onto the create a new object icon. It's going to create a new sequence of all the settings. And now if we're going to 100%, you can see it is the high quality version. So it's that simple. Just do your edit, add some color correction. It's automatically going to link all the high resolution files. You don't have to do anything. Premiere is going to do everything for you. This was it. I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Safe diving and I hopefully will see you in the next video.